So I think we'll get started. Um, hello again. I hope you've been having a really nice time with the family orientation. And we've gotten a lot of good information, and hopefully your minds are more at ease about leaving your students here. Um, I'd first like to have our wonderful panel introduce themselves. Maybe tell them what year you are, what's your major, and a little bit about your experience your freshman year here at Williams. Start there. All right, um, so my name is Hussein. I'm a biology major and a neuroscience and public health concentrator from Pakistan. My freshman year, I really liked it because I didn't really know what to expect from Williams because in Pakistan, they really don't stress, like we don't, there's no conversation on like a liberal arts, like style of teaching. So that was very interesting coming here. I didn't know what to expect. But I feel like my freshman year experience was great. I, I met a lot of great people that are still some of my closest friends. I had the opportunity of working with professors who let me work in their lab and help, like, let me do things that I wanted to do from the get-go. And I had a really great time. I feel like I went an immense period of personal, underwent an immense period of personal growth within the first three or four months while I was here. I think the way that I developed in that small time frame has like let me adjust to having a great time at Williams, and I think that's an easy and common experience for most people here. Uh, my name is Sean. Um, I'm an I'm a junior. I'm an econ major um, from Ghana. Um, on campus, um, I'm involved in the Williams African Students Organization and in the Gospel Choir. And freshman year it was those two things that really helped me make it through. Um, it was just finding um, a, a group of friends, finding a circle of friends who, um, one were going through what I was going through, and one like I, I could look to and um, for support. And so um, one thing that I would say is just that it's, it's all about like finding a niche or a, a group of people that can support. And that's really what brought me through freshman year and helped me to grow. Hi, I'm Gabs. I'm gonna be a senior. I'm from the Philippines and I study psychology and history and I concentrate in neuroscience and global studies. Freshman year, <laughs> um, it started off with the orientation which your kids are now going through and that's where I found a lot of my first friends like Hussein. Um, so I started off the year already having made friends and that was really nice, you know, going into the year Americans are coming and I already made a friend so that was very reassuring. Um, and then the first few weeks of school, it was a period of growth. There were like cultural things that I might not have gotten, but because Williams has the entry system, have you guys heard about the entry system yet? Yeah, so um, my entry was really welcoming. Um, and so every time I didn't understand something, they would explain it to me. Um, so it was really not, like it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Um, but instead, everyone was super welcoming. I found my best friends in my entry that I never thought I would be friends with, and I've lived with them since freshman year until now. Like, they're still my best friends. And in class as well, it was the same thing. I found really great professors, support systems. For example, my freshman fall, I was too afraid to go to my professor's office hours. But I was taking an American history class. And I don't know anything about American history. Um, but my professor invited me out to coffee and asked me, you know, what questions do you have about American history? You can ask all of them to me, I'll answer them so that, you know, you can get a better grasp and, you know, be on par with your American classmates in this American history class. So it was really, really nice of her and that's continued all throughout my Williams experience, I'd say. It's been a great experience so far. <laughs> Um, I'm Alina. I'm a sophomore this year and I'm originally from New Zealand. So freshman year was last year for me. So last year at this point um, I was doing the orientation and you know getting to know people and Gabs was actually the um, coordinator for the international orientation last year. So I got to meet her on the first day. She was very lovely and so was Nina. Um, but yeah, so freshman year you do learn a lot of stuff. There is a period of adjustment, but I would say any sort of difficulty that you experience, um, it is worth it in the end because Williams has given me so much more opportunities um, in terms of like personal growth, academics, meeting people, also career-wise that you wouldn't get elsewhere. And um, 
I say this with the knowledge of having actually attended a pre-professional school back in Australia. So um, even though there is like a period of adjustment, I still feel like Williams um, is a great place to be and it's a great place to learn more. I'm Ziki and I'm from China. I'm going to be a senior, so I'm so old. And I major in economics, math, and physics. So back in my freshman year, I feel a bit anxious, to be honest. I mean, if you go to a new environment, there's no way you can say that you're just happy and feel safe about everything. That's undeniable. But while, you are anxious, while the students are anxious, I also found a lot of support from the entry. Although it's a bit cliche, I really made a lot of good friends from the class and from the entry. So, and the school gave us a lot of opportunities. So the school encourages us to talk to the professors, which made me to make friends with my math professor back in my freshman year. And the school also encourages us to talk to our JAs and other old students, which was also very helpful for me to get through that time period. So I would say that even though new students are feeling a bit anxious and maybe stressed out about the coursework, and you know for Williams it's a very good college, to be honest. It's one of the best liberal arts college, right? So there's a lot of stress in terms of studying and the coursework. But I would say that I, feel I had a very good experience here. And also when I was in my freshman year, I took a philosophy class and I took a political science class. And those classes designed for freshmen are very eye-opening. So I, I wouldn't say that I became a very professional in terms of philosophy or political science, but it really helped me to view the world in a different way. So in terms of that, I would say that I had a very nice experience here. And maybe the food was pretty nice. I would actually say that because I mean, sometimes people complain about the food because they've been eating, or we've been eating here in the same dining halls for like three years or two years, and we got tired of that. But if people have been to like other colleges or even high schools, they have found that the food here are actually pretty good. And, and nutrition-wise, uh, it's also nice. We have all kinds of vegetables and meats and vegan food and all sorts of stuff. So I really like here. So thanks for sharing those. So if you could think of one challenge that you've had and how you overcame that challenge, just one specific story or instance. So um, for me personally, my the way that I was taught to write was in Pakistan, like most of the essays and any writing assignments that we had, we had a very like fiction writing based approach. So even within like papers that I was writing for my science classes, I took some of, of like this very wordy and like, like basically like how you get to talk, like how you write if like you come up from like a very British based system of education. And like a lot of my professors here were surprised by that. And in some classes that didn't seem to work. So like I would find myself not doing that well in those classes. But then I started having conversations with my professors, started learning that there were available resources that I could like, like that I could use to better my writing to suit their needs, and as well as like suit my needs as well. Because in science, what I want to do later in life, like writing, is supposed to be direct. And here, like I was, I could, I got help from my professor. I got help from the writing workshop. And then I also took a class called Tutorials, where you basically write a paper like every other week, and then a person sits in the same room, critiques it in front of you with the professor, and you're allowed to talk about your writing, your material, and everything else. And like within a semester, your writing like can go from being just like ramblings to just like extremely concise, direct writing that is great for anyone to read. So I think that was a job that I faced. Mm -hmm. I think for me it was missing home. Um, uh, missing everything about home, the food, the people. Um, and, but it, I mean like in these days we have, we have WhatsApp, we have Facebook, we have all these kind of things. So I, I made sure to make time for video calls, FaceTimes, um, chatting with parents every day, you know, stuff like that. You know, just, I just made sure to um, not forget to call my mom. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. One of the 
challenges that I faced, not even just in freshman year, but also beyond, <laughs> was making friends with professors. <laughs> Um, because in the Philippines it's a you know it's a hierarchical culture, so I found it hard to view them as you know friends or you know someone I can just talk to about things outside of class. I just saw them as authority figures, um, and it was hard for me to bridge that wall. But so I often wouldn't go to office hours, or I wouldn't make the effort to chat with my professors outside of class. But the great thing about Williams is that my professors actually ended up chasing me down because they wanted to get to know me. So they would say, okay, you like, will schedule a meeting. Like, it's not just open office hours, come whenever you want. Like, why don't you come at 3 p.m.? And while I was in the office, like, they would go beyond talking about academics and they would ask me about my personal life and they would share a little bit about their life. So because of how welcoming my professors have been, I've gotten over being scared to talk to them. <laughs> and now I'm actually really good friends with many of my professors. I've been invited to their homes or they take me out for coffee, things like that. So it's been a nice journey, <laughs> finally at the place I wanna be with many of my professors. Um, for me, it was a lot of it was um, being away from the city because I'd always grown up in a big city, you know, like being really conveniently around like shops and like places to eat. I'm used to eating like really good food all the time, like for a very low price. So I was not used to just Spring Street. And uh, while it seems nice now, like as you get into the winter months, it gets a little bit more dreary and you want to have some food that you're more used to. Whereas the dining hall food is like salad may be good in the summer, but not that good in the winter. But um, people here really do help you try to bridge that sort of like inconsistency. So we're really close to New York, we're close to Boston, and like definitely your kids will meet friends who are from those areas, as well as Maine, and you know, just other pa parts of Massachusetts, and you know, people can rent out zip cars and like drive there, drive the city in the weekends. And uh, also, um, your kids will probably have professors or like authority figures that, you know, will take them places. Um, one of my professors actually offered to take me and another student to like a ballet show and like, you know, to Wild Oats, which is like a store that's not that far away, but it's still like they will put in the effort to take you to places. So that really did help me feel closer to the city. For me, it might be the coursework. Back in my sophomore year, I took a physics class that took maybe 20 hours a week to do a problem set. So which is probably bad, but there is still something good about like here while it is far from everywhere. Or we usually say that Williams is in the middle of nowhere. We don't have shops or good food and cheap prices. But when people just start walking around while they are stressed, it's like people are just relieved. Mm -hmm. So that's, I guess that's one, the best thing about the settings here. And besides that, the professors are usually very helpful because I have a lot of friends who are in Harvard or like those big universities. And they said that when they want to meet the professors, they send me three emails, then the professor just doesn't bother responding to them. But in Williams, if a student just go to the office hours, so not even in the office hours, just walk into the office at some random time, usually the professor is willing to help. So that's my experience with that, so I'm happy with it. And another thing is that sometimes when people are all stressed out, say in a, sometimes in the entry, the students are just doing homework together. We work in a common room and then we start to complaining to each other about how much work we have. So we kind of feel like all of us are working very hard and we are supporting each other in that sense. So while sometimes when you talk to the students, they complain, they complain to you that, oh, it's so hard and everything's bad. So you shouldn't be too worried about that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, maybe you should understand that sometimes they have a lot of workload and they want to get smarter and get stronger, so they need to spend a lot of time. But you shouldn't be too concerned about their mental health because it's just so supportive here. So something I forgot to mention earlier was, is we have a program called the International Connection, Community Connections Program where we have families from the community, whether they be staff or faculty or other families, that connect with first year incoming students. 
And it's really nice because we do like two big events on campus and then during holidays or downtimes, sometimes the families will invite them over for dinner and just act as another support system there. So if they're really missing that like family structure, they, they will connect with, with the community. So it's been a, a really nice program for some of our students. Um, and it's optional, so students can self-select into it or not, but we've had a lot of success with it. Um, and they kind of build relationships that carry on for the next three years after, so it's nice. Um, so I have one more question before I open it up to you guys. Um, so if you could give families, so this is all family and friends, so as a student here, what advice do you have for them in supporting their students? Anyone can start. <laughs> Hmm. I'll say don't worry too much about us. <laughs> like we're fine. <laughs> um, we have we like we have a, a, a huge support systems in place. Academically, we have a bunch of support systems. Um, writing, math, and science. Um, all the resources are there, like for us to take advantage of if we ask for them. And so, like Williams will take care of your of your kid. Williams will take care of your friend. Um, but it's, it's it's definitely okay to be like, hey, what's up? Like, like, and personally for me, I would I would want my mom to like text me more often. So just just like don't be afraid to say hi like once in a while and remind them because sometimes we forget. I forget a lot to talk to my mom because like it's just so much work. So just remind, just be like, hey, what's up? Yeah, we haven't spoken in a week. Um, stuff like that. So yeah, just don't worry and um, text us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would say understand that we're really busy students. So if we forget to text or forget to call, like it doesn't mean anything bad has happened. It probably just means that we're working hard at school. Um, and you can just text. My parents sometimes just text me, are you alive? And I just text back, <laughs> yes, I'm great. <laughs> just busy. Um, and I would also say that sometimes it's really nice to talk to my parents and they don't ask me anything about academics because I am like hear academics all the time you know so when I'm on the phone with my mom and dad I like hearing not just like oh like how school what are your grades or things like that you know like it's they're all okay but <laughs> I do like hearing about what's happening at home not just like me talking but also my mom randomly sends me pictures of my dog that always helps me throughout the week <laughs> um, so little things like that and that will make a difference, I think, in making them happy at Williams. Um, I think just be supportive, like, especially in the first few months, um, because, I don't know, everyone's experiences are different. Maybe some people will adjust really quickly to the school, or other students will, like, you know, for me, I experience a lot of, like, self-doubt. Like, if your child had been accepted to other schools, maybe they're thinking, I should have chosen the other school instead of Williams College. At that point, you know, there's no going back, you're here, you know. So like, if your child does like say to you, oh like, you know, maybe I shouldn't have taken this class or maybe I shouldn't have come to Williams, just be supportive and say, no, you made the right choice. Like, I believe in you and sort of just, just I think being supportive and like not talking about academics is, is a good way to go. Do we get to see the grades? You would have to ask your student yeah. for those. Yeah. And also, contrary to the advice that sometimes you shouldn't bother your children too much, I would say, on the other hand, when sometimes we say that, oh, we are fine, everything's great, and we're very excited, it might also be the case that we are a bit anxious and overexcited about the environments here, because uh, maybe it's a bit repetitive, but when we get to a new environment, there's no way that we are not nervous or not anxious. So if you just test them and somehow express the kind of feeling that you are with them and you are caring about their mental health, or not mental health specifically, you are caring about whether they are happy or whether they are feeling like they're, they're enjoying the peaceful life here or they are making new friends, or if they are having a couple of good friends, I think that would be very helpful. Just like Gab's parents, like they just send up pictures, and that's a very good way of doing it. My piece of 
advice for this would be um, make sure that your child has support networks outside of you here. I think um, for my parents, I think one of the main sources of worry that they mostly have is that like I am there like for a while like sometimes I don't like I don't like using my phone as much to communicate with people. So like I take days to reply to messages. So like I'm really bad at doing that. But like they use social media to keep track of my life, so you guys should do the same. And I guess that'll like keep that's like my base. Uh, just make sure your children have friends here. Just like ask them how they're doing, if they're connecting well with other people, if they're finding like like-minded people who are helping them grow as human beings as well. Just like make sure like they're not only developing academically here. Like ask them things about like, like ask them about ideas they're having, ask them about like what kind of like political thoughts like they're being surrounded by, like what kind of things people around them talk about, like make sure that they're like not being bombarded by like extraneous things that are distracting towards them, but like actually that they're like making an effort to be surrounded by good wholesome people who are growing with them while they're growing as well. So I'm going to open the floor a little bit to some of your questions. And you can ask the panel. You can also ask me if you'd like. So I will let you ask them anything you want. Can I just pick up on the last comment? Yeah. What, what distractions or other things that you found in your freshman year that was? Okay, so um, freshman year, I found uh, there were uh, I'm a person who does like to do a lot of things, like currently, like I do five extracurriculars. Freshman year, I did around 10 and like, I just like threw myself into them completely. And like, I found like some of them were just like things I kind of cared about and didn't really care about. But like, in <laughs> retrospect, if I could get back like the month and a half I put into one organization and did a decent amount of work. Then, like, if I could get that time back, I would be very appreciative <laughs> of that. But, yeah. Um, if you could point out one thing that you, you all think you did, you did right in the first year, what would that be? Friends? Yeah. Yeah, because you might notice that all, maybe four of us, I couldn't count, but it's like <laughs> most of us mentioned that we've made a lot of good friends in the college, and that's, I, I would say that's one of the biggest accomplishments here. Because you can just imagine that for all the people coming to Williams, they are, at, at least they prefer this kind of liberal arts education, and they are willing to talk, they are willing to think about stuff, and they are willing to enjoy this kind of rural sightseeing. So, and when we are embedded in inside this kind of groups. It's actually nice that people are just at least more nice, nicer and more quiet than the people in the cities, I guess. And usually those kind of friends care more about like each other's feelings or like maybe the mental world or maybe even philosophy. So when we start to talk to these kind of friends instead of the friends that feels like fast food, like, hey, what's up? Oh, I'm good. Bye-bye. This kind of person. Yeah, I would say that's, that's one of the best things I've done here, to make friends with those people. For me, it was to find um, an activity that was really meaningful to me and one that I um, was able to put my time in and look forward to. And also through that, I was able to find friends. So it's like sometimes like friends will not just come to you. You have to go find them sometimes. And for me, I found them through the activities I was involved in. And so that one thing, finding the activity, helped me to find friends and helped me to find a thing that I can hold on to. Um, one thing I believe I did right was, I, uh, I would like to do biomedical research as I see further into my life. So freshman year, I asked the professor if I could work in her lab. And I gained research experience like I've gained so much research experience since then that like it's allowed me to get placements into like extremely like competitive um, 
undergraduate internship programs and like will help me like in the coming forward year to like in applying to grad schools and other programs as well. So like if you know like your child is interested in a certain career path or something, I would stress like I would hopefully like push them towards like getting some experience working with a professional in that field. Or like if like even if it's not science, like if they want to do econ or philosophy or like they want to become a lawyer, like there's professors here that you can work with them and like they ask you to do research for them. So like by doing that, you get to learn so much about what you might be doing one day in the first year that you're here. So I think that was one thing that I really think that I did right. Mm -hmm. And I'll just speak with, to that a little bit. Um, because students are here under an F1 immigration status, they have opportunities. First of all, they can work anywhere on campus. So a lot of our students get campus on campus jobs. Um, and even in the summertime, they do research assistance trips. So they make relationships with professors and they work with them in the summer. Um, they also have opportunities for curricular practical training. And this is now into the second year where they can do an internship in the summer. Um, and then afterwards, they have optional practical training. So everyone has 12 months of work experience. And for STEM majors, they get three years. So there's a lot of opportunity to get work experience while they're studying, while they're in the United States. I just wanted to add that. Somewhat connected to that, something that I think I did right was getting really involved in the international community and also making friends with international upperclassmen because it is a different job application process sometimes for international students. So my friends from the US, um, they go through a different job application process because they don't have to worry about visas, mm -hmm. for example. So I'm really glad that I started thinking about things like that right away and I knew where to go if I need if I had lots of questions aka I went to Nina um, and I bothered her with all my questions but um, I know I didn't bother you but she was very patient um, so I'm really glad that it got me thinking about my future way in advance and also that I had a support system of people I could go to if I did have questions about what's in store for me in the future as an international student. Um, for me, I think it was taking a variety of classes, like the first semester in your first year here, usually you haven't chosen what major you want or like what sort of pathway you want. Um, I know it's different for some people, like who say I want to be a doctor, but it's just good, especially coming from like maybe the education system that I came from, which was the A-level system. You kind of didn't really have a lot of um, like flexibility in what sort of subjects you can take. Here you can take like more history, more like philosophy, English literature, art history, that kind of thing. So for me, I think it was just being able to, you know, really utilize the liberal arts education system before, you know, settling on a major, for example, I want to do statistics and economics. So it's good to have the other basics um, taken down before you go into your major. So one thing you can do with the students, instead of asking them to focus more on studying or on making friends and getting a lot of social influences, you should urge, if not forcing them, to start thinking about jobs and getting interns if they want to work in the future, or maybe getting research opportunities if, you, if they want to work in research. And another thing is, as Alina just said, students get exposed to all sorts of classes and different things in the college, so it would also be helpful if you start asking them to explore and see where their interests are. Because back in high school, we studied, all studied history and literature and math, sciences. It's just the same kind of things. But in college, when we have the opportunities to do statistics or art history or sociology, that's a whole different story. So I guess you might want to pressure them to look for, <laughs> to start thinking about those interests and maybe a career path, if possible. I just take the part where you said we should pressure them. <laughs> Gently pressure them. Gently, yes. But to think outside of what maybe they've yeah. already done. Like go outside. other yeah, subjects. More questions? But the, uh, if you are an international student, you have one visa. Can you find a summer job in the mm -hmm. US? 
outside of campus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So our students do internships all over the United States. Um, do one of you want to, or a couple of you want to talk about an internship experience? I had an internship in Martha's Vineyard, which is here in Massachusetts, but it's by the beach. So it was the best place to have a summer job. Um, I was working at a camp for people with disabilities and that camp couldn't pay me, but I applied for a grant through our career center and they actually paid me to take that unpaid job so that I could still go there, but at the same time earn money. So that was my experience working off campus while I was a student here. And one thing about the administration is that usually when the international students graduated, we got an OPT to work for like 12 months or so. But when, if we want to work as interns over the summers, for most of the schools, they will just take 12 months out and get us something like an OPT visa. So that if we work for like maybe three months over this summer, we will only have nine months to work as an intern after we graduate. But back in Williams, we, the school will just apply for CPT, which is a different kind of visa. And, but to apply for that, the school, especially Nina, needs to do a, lot of, a great deal of work. So usually in other schools, like my friends in Harvard told me that their schools are not willing to do that, which means if she interns somewhere for three months, she'll have three fewer months to work after she graduated. But in Williams, we don't have these kind of problems. Yeah, so how it works is CPT is a curricular. So it's actually part of their program of study. So whatever they do internship-wise has to be related to their program of study. Um, and they, they enroll in a winter study course that's for CPT. So they do their summer internship experience, and then they come back and they present a paper and a presentation about their experience. And it has to some way enhance their, their program here. So that's uh, CPT, is it, it's what it's called. And usually students do sometimes two or three summer internships throughout their time here. So it's a really great option where they can save their postgraduate work, uh, the 12 months they can save the whole thing for afternoons. Uh, one more question is about if, um, how many international students will, after they graduate from the Williams? Mm -hmm. And how many of them really find a full-time job in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, I've been here a little more than a year, so I've seen one um, class graduate and go through, and I would say that a lot of them do find um, jobs. I do have some that actually return home to work, mm -hmm. so it really depends on what they want um, and if they want to stay within the United States. But we spend a lot of time talking about options and how to plan and prepare for that. I do workshops, um, one in the fall and one in the spring, about their options for employment. So I, yeah, what Gab said, like I started thinking about it maybe in freshman year, like really early, because you kind of, you do have to plan more when yeah, you have this the, the situation is changing all the time. Right. We said the situation is changing all the time, so we get confused about whether the students from international mm -hmm. students can really stay mm -hmm. to do some work or right. must help go back to their home country right. or what? And that's really my job is to stay informed and updated so that as soon as I know something, I will communicate that to the students um, and give them advice on how to navigate any changes. Mm -hmm. But it can be very confusing and, and it changes a lot, so I try to make it as simple as possible so it's, it's understandable. Do five the, thing, the thing I like about Williams is that it opens not just doors in the U.S., but doors in many, many other countries. So last year as a freshman, I was an intern in Malawi. Like, I know friends who, I have a friend who spent the summer in Argentina. Um, literally any, any country, there are many countries that you could go to after graduation or even in your internship. So even if they don't end up staying in the U.S., they can end up going back home or going to another country that they've never been to. So I studied away in the spring, this past spring, so I just got back, um, in Scotland. And I really liked it. The visa process was really easy with Nina's help and the help of the study abroad office. It, it, I got my visa no problem to the UK and I was able to explore around the UK and also 
um, explore other countries that I could go to with my own visa. Um, <laughs> so it was a really great opportunity and if, you're, if your child gets financial aid, then that financial aid will follow them to wherever they go. So all of my board and lodging and tuition abroad, it was all paid for and I had some extra money for food and for vacation. Like, it was very, very nice. Scotland is beautiful. One more question. Yeah. Oh, one more question, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. In Harvard, about this uh, tutoring assistant in Williams, it's very famous, and very unique. Uh, I heard, we heard about one professor, still tutoring students, still does in some way. Anybody can talk about the, what kind of experience is that? Yeah, so um, I took a tutorial, and my tutorial was in, on infectious disease. So how it would work is like, I'm like me and my partner, we would meet with one professor. And for one week, like for every week, we were assigned a different infectious disease to research and then write a paper about a certain thing that was happening in regards to that disease, like if a certain type of vaccine was being developed or something was happening. So how it would work was like, we would, like I would read about it, write a paper, and then submit that paper to my professor and my partner, and then we'd meet the next day. They have one day with the paper, and my partner would come in with like a two-page response to my paper, and then we'd all sit and discuss the thing together. Like I would read out my paper completely, then we'd talk about it in stages. Like That's the thing that I spoke about in terms of my writing. The tutorial program really helped me improve my writing because it just gives you a massive amount of feedback and a very small time and like lets you work on a lot of components at once. So both of you will write a paper and exchange and then write a response to each other. Yes. Discuss. Yeah. So every, the second day we discuss two. Oh, so no, every week, like the first week I wrote a paper and submitted it. The second week he wrote, so it alternates. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so it depends on the class. Um, for my tutorial, which was very science heavy, most of the students were bio majors. However, one of my friends took a tutorial in um, modern Japanese literature, and she was not a Japanese major, or like she didn't consider, consider it, I don't think Asian studies is a concentration. Yeah. Oh, it's a, yeah, oh, it's not a major, yeah. So she didn't, wasn't doing anything in that, but she was just interested in it, so she took it. So you don't have to come from the same major either. Everybody need to do that or you choose to do you, it? You, you can choose, choose to do it, it. yeah. Last question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's great. Sorry. Uh, if you uh, not go home in some holidays or vacation, what will you do? Like short, like Thanksgiving days or some spring break, whatever. I know that long holidays you go to maybe uh, summer job, but it's a few days, long weekend. What do you do normally? Okay. So for me, I usually, I mean, there is, it's always an option to stay on campus. You could do that. But for me, because I have some friends in the U.S. or, yeah, mostly in, in the U.S. I just go visit them. Say for spring break, I have two weeks, so maybe I just hang out with three or four high school friends who are studying, like in Chicago or Philadelphia or something like that. Yeah, and you'll meet a lot of people at Williams who live close by. So like they'll invite you, to, they'll invite your kids to their homes um, over Thanksgiving break or like spring break. And there's also um, breakout trips, I think they're called. Yeah, so there are um, these trips organized by Williams College over spring break where kids can go to places in the Caribbean, like... Anywhere. Yeah, anywhere they, in yeah, the anywhere world, anywhere. yeah. It's organized by the, organized by the college. It's organized yeah. by yeah. students. Yeah, the but students volunteer to organize the trip. Okay. And then the leaders organize the trip and they invite people to go with them. Mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. um, I have done two of those trips. I went to New Orleans my freshman year, and then I went to Austin, Texas my sophomore year. Usually during Thanksgiving, I spend it, my first year I spent it with my friends from the Philippines who also study in the US, it was a high school reunion. Um, 
but my sophomore year I spent it at the Muslim chaplain's house. I'm not Muslim. We just became friends and he invited me to his house for Thanksgiving and my professor also invited me to his house for Thanksgiving. So it was nice to have options. Yeah. I mean, for, th for Thanksgivings, I think Americans are very particular about people not being alone for Thanksgiving. So a kid will probably be invited by someone for Thanksgiving. Um, and for the winter, um, international students are allowed to stay on campus if you apply. Um, there's a process and you can stay on campus. So I stayed on campus over the winter break. And for spring break, I had some high school friends in Stanford. I just flew over to California and spent two weeks in California. It was fun. Um, so yeah, you, you can, America is a big country, so you can probably just, you can move from one point to the other very quickly and yeah, easily. Um, for most of my breaks, I've made friend, friends at Williams and I usually, like, they invite me to come with them back to their homes or wherever, like, they're usually going. I've gone on vacation with one of my friends, like, two or three times, like, wherever her family goes. They just, like, in what, like, at this point, they, like, consider me a part of their family, so they just, like, invite me with them. And this is a person I met, like, in my freshman year. And, like, I, like, spent Christmas with her family my freshman year. Like, the, like, they're really great people, and I have a lot of fun with them. And, like, even if I choose not to do that, like, I can visit other friends that I go to school here with. Like, it just depends on what you want to do more so. So along the same lines, maybe one of the final questions. Does anyone want to talk about the International Club? What about you, President? Yeah. Yeah. I'm this year's president of the International Club. I don't what know, I was odds? looking around. I don't know who was <laughs> um, My freshman year, I was actually 0% involved in the International Club. I didn't go to any of their events um, because I was so close to my entry. But in my sophomore year, when I became an orientation leader, I fell in love with all of the freshmen that were coming in. It was so much fun during orientation that I wanted to be a bigger, I wanted to have a bigger role in the community. So I started going to more and more international events until now I guess I'm the president this year. Um, we do hold a lot of events. We have dinner every week together in, on Tuesdays. We might change it this year, but so it's always nice to see everyone at least once a week. We also plan random events. Last year we went apple picking during the fall, or we plan a trip to the movie. We get this big bus and everyone piles in to go to the movies and watch Avengers or whatever the new movie is. Um, even during the summer while I was here, we went bowling and again we went to the movies. We're big fans of the movies. Um, and we also have a few events every year that everyone loves, like the talent show where people just show a talent but it can be something from your country, or like a cultural dance if you'd like, or not. You can just, I don't know, do magic tricks if you'd like. And there's also the food fair where people are invited to cook dishes from their home country and share it with the rest of the Williams community, not just the international club. And there are also just random events throughout the year. For example, we meet um, the graduate students that study developmental economics so my freshman year, I met two Filipinos who worked at some department of finance in the Philippines, but they came here to study for a year. So it was also nice to meet them, and we, we interact with them at least once or twice every semester. So that's also nice to maybe find a fellow countryman there if you don't have one on campus in the undergraduate population. So any final questions? <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank you so much, and if you have any more questions, I'll hang out for a little bit, and I'm happy to answer them. So thank you to our panel. Thank you. Thank you.